we meet again. Let's proceed with our technical communication topic. In this lesson, you will learn about technical description and technical definition, specifically focusing on short formal definition. Ready? When we talk about technical description, it is interrelated with a text that describes an object or process in terms of its function, organization, parts, and details. What are the patterns of technical description? First, the writer will name the object or process and describes its function. Second, the writer will give an overview of the object or process, including its size, parts, and other relevant descriptors. Not only that, the writer will give details in regards with each and every significant component by giving explanations, locations, and physical descriptions of each component. Furthermore, the writer must determine which elements of a description to emphasize. And finally, visual are usually included in order to assist reader to understand both object or process as a whole and its significant elements. Hence, definitions, analogies, and familiar terms or jargon may be utilized in order to help reader to understand it better. What are the foundations of effective technical writing? There are three foundations of effective technical writing. In which the first one, you need to know who are your target reader. Second, know your objective or goal. And finally, be simple, direct and concise. So these are the tips in writing good technical description. The first tip, write to your audience. Your choice of language, for example, technical level, use of jargon and acronyms is important to your description being readable and accepted. Second, straight to the point. Do not overload the description with details. Reader wants detail on the product or process, but you, yourself as a writer, should eliminate any unnecessary details. And finally, clear and unambiguous language. Make it readable. Technical descriptions are usually objective and reader is looking for particular information. Keep organization simple by keeping terminology and style consistent, including graphics, whenever it is appropriate. Next, technical definition. Here, as for technical definition, we are going to focus on short formal definition. But before we go deeper, you need to understand what definition is all about. Definition is a text that contains technical terminology in which it will include definition and explanation. So whenever reader read it, reader will get benefit. If there are no expert on the subject or perhaps the student. So a term or word should be defined if first it is unfamiliar to the readers, second has more than one meaning, third has a specific meaning in that discipline. So definition is a statement that gives clear, exact, concise description or explanation of a word, phrase, or nature of an object. So whenever you want to write a definition, you must use these common words or expressions, is or are, depending on the, the, the term itself, whether it is singular or plural. If it is, it is meant for singular, are is meant for plural. That is, means, denotes, refers to, can be, or is used to, is, or can be defined as, means in other words. Let me show you the examples. First, a computer is an electronic device. When you're writing a definition, 
you need to utilize common words or expression when you are writing a definition. For example, you utilize the word is here in your sentence structure. You want to define what is the meaning of computer. So you utilize is as your common word or expression when you are writing a definition. A computer is, there it goes, the definition of computer and electronic device. Same goes with the second example. Plants are nature's green lungs. So basically plants, it is in plural. So you use are as your common words or expression when you want to define what is the meaning of plants. So the meaning of plants, nature's green lungs. Another example. Claustrophobia means a very strong fear of enclosed spaces. So you use means as your common words or expression when you want to define the term claustrophobia. So here the meaning of claustrophobia, a very strong fear of enclosed spaces. And finally, a lab refers to, because a lab it is singular, right? So your expression when you want to define the term lab, you use the word refers to. A lab refers to, then you give the definition of a lab. A room or building used for scientific research. So, what are the rules in writing a good definition? The first rule. Do not use the word you are defining in a definition, or we call it circular definition. Take a look at the examples given. The first example, technical communication is a technical subject. So instead of defining what is the meaning of technical communication, the author simply repeat the word technical in the definition. So the term Technical communication is not well defined here. It is ambiguous. It is unclear. Same goes with the second example. Skin cancer is a disease that damages the skin. Again, the author repeat the same mistake. Instead of defining what is the meaning of skin cancer, the author simply repeat the word skin in the definition. It is ambiguous. It is unclear. How about the second rule? Do not give a list of examples instead of defining the word. For instance, technical communication refers to proposal and reports. Instead of defining what is the meaning of technical communication, the author is giving the examples of technical documents namely proposal and report. Next, elements of definition. If you want to produce a short formal definition, these are the elements that you need to consider. First, use plain, simple English. Let's say you want to define what's the meaning of tumor. You write it as a tumor is a neoplasm. There's nothing wrong about it. However, the word neoplasm itself, <gasps> it is unclear. It requires more explanation, especially for those who did not have any background knowledge about it. They have no idea what is neoplasm. So instead of using a bombastic word to define a tumor, you can always use plain simple English. By defining it into, a tumor is a growth of cells which occur independently of surrounding tissue and serves no useful function. There it goes. This definition is clearer as it gives an accurate description of the word tumor. Second element, use basic properties. A thermometer measures temperature. This is essential information that tells reader that shows the function of thermometer same goes with the second example a book can be used to write in 
display pictures and record financial transaction. This definition shows a few uses of books. The third element, use objectivity. A bomb is defined as an explosive weapon detonated by impact and timing mechanism. This definition contains fact about a bomb. If you put it this way, a bomb is an explosive weapon devised by some idiots to blow up the world? No, 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 no. Because the term some idiots is a personal opinion and should never be included in your definition. Moving on to types of definition. There are two types of definition. The first one, short formal definition, in which it consists of one sentence and the second one extended definition in which it consists of several paragraphs when you want to define the word or the terminology let's focus on short formal definition basically short formal definition will consist of three parts the term word or phrase that needs to be defined the class of the object or concept which the term belongs to and the different characteristics which distinguish this term from all others of class. Let me show you the examples. Let's say you need to define the word water. So water is your term or word that you need to define. Your auxiliary verb you are going to use is. What is the class of water? It is a liquid. What is its differentiating characteristic? Made up of two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. Hence, water is a liquid made up of two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. The second term that you need to define, topaz. Topaz, it is singular, right? So your auxiliary verb is. What is the class of topaz? It is a mineral. Differentiating characteristics, which is transparent, aluminum silicate, usually yellow and used as a gem. The third example. A pencil. A pencil, it is singular. So your auxiliary verb will be is. What is the class of a pencil? An instrument. What is its differentiating characteristics? Used for writing or drawing, made of graphite, enclosed in a wooden cylinder. When you are writing a short formal definition, you need to follow these rules. The first rule, mention specific class differentiation. Assign term to a class and then detail precisely how this term differs from other term within that class. For example, an elephant is a huge mammal. Order of proposites of the suborder Elephantodia. So, when you are defining an elephant, Using short formal definition, you need to mention the class of an elephant. So it is a mammal. You need to mention its specific class differentiation to define the word elephant. Order of proposites of the suborder Elephantodia. So basically, this is the specific class that makes it different from other class. Makes the term differs from other term within that class. The second rule, do not repeat the word. Never ever repeat same word used in definition. For example, a postman is a man who carries and delivers letter. You are just repeating the word man in your definition. 
you can make your short formal definition better when you mention it this way. A postman is a mail carrier who delivers letters. So basically, this new definition of a postman gives new information to the work of a postman for much more better because it gives a detailed information about the job of a postman. Alright everyone, now it's time for you to conduct class activity. What you have to do, work in a group of five. You need to retain your existing rule. Each and every member is required to find one word or one term to be defined using short formal definition based on your assigned theme in our WhatsApp group. Once you are done, you need to complete your tutorial task in which, based on your guided discussion during in-class activity, each group is required to compile short formal definition and submit it author. Group activities, week 9, short formal definition. Till then, see you in the next video. Bye!